All right, Alex, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm really excited to do this interview because, you know, I've been working out of this space here for two years and yeah, I know you have a lot of great information to share. So why don't we get started by you just introducing yourself and talking a little bit about your business. Uh, yeah, I am the CEO and creator of FlexOffers.com. Uh, I created that about six years ago. It came from another network I created called Card Offers Network, which I've had for about 15 years, which was Card Offers. I'm also the creator of Miami Shared, which is the lovely space here. Uh, Flex Offers is an affiliate marketing network, um, and uh, we work with hundreds of advertisers out there. And, um, and Miami Shared is a great co-working space environment and where we rent desks to private offices uh, to share desks to other entrepreneurs. Awesome, awesome. Let's talk a little bit about Flex Offers, but you mentioned that it started with card offers. So would you mind telling us how did you find product market fit? So in other words, you came up with a great idea to run an affiliate network. What did you do to test that idea before you know, dumping a bunch of money into a business? Well, I guess the, I, before the network, I was a publisher in the, in the affiliate industry, so I was I owned cardoffers.com, the website. So as a publisher, at the end of the day, um, I was like, you know what? Why don't I try the network side of things and provide content and um, other services? And so at the end of the day, I uh, wrote reviews and did other cool credit card related materials for, for publishers in, our, in the network. So it came out to become Card Offers um, Publisher Network. And uh, that grew from there. Okay, so you started almost in the industry yeah. on one side and said, hey, I can do it on the other side. Yeah. And got started that way. That's good, that's good. And how did you, I mean, that's a leap of faith uh, to say it one way, but how did you find your first few customers? How did you get people to join your network? Well, uh, a lot of marketing, um, you know, emails, uh, phone calls. I actually hired some marketers back in the days. Um, you know, people would go to the website card offers. It was very well indexed by Google. So at that time, it was very easy to get referring traffic. So I typed in credit card offer, you know, card offers would pop up. Okay. So, um, but, and then the other days, you have a few publishers that come in and use your products and services and other publishers see those publishers using your products and services so it had a good uh, so snowball effect there. Okay, so did you, am I correct in, in assuming that you built this web brand at first, cardoffers.com, mm -hmm. and you kind of got some SEO traffic from that and then you did some supplemental marketing techniques to get more more customers? Yeah, I had a few people, hire, I, I hired a few people to um, help me out for editorial stuff, for marketing, and they would just make, you know, emails out there and send you emails and um, phone calls and, and start, you know, bringing people in, really them in. Now, how did you find your target market? There's a ton of affiliates out there, there are a ton of people who could probably use your services or, or use your platform. How did you narrow it down? In, in your mind, what was the, the process for narrowing it down? Oh, that's great. I mean, yeah, basically you just look, you know, type in Google financial website. Uh, <laughs> You know, anyone who's already promoting something financial related, or better yet, credit card related, and if they don't have links in there that go to the applications where they can earn some revenue, it, it was a no-brainer saying, hey, you know what, you can make money from uh, generating applications, okay. uh, approvals from applications, so that's okay. how they signed up. Okay, and, and that's how you got the, the affiliates, right? Mm -hmm. And how did you get the, the advertisers to link to those affiliates? What was the process? Well, I was already working with the advertisers okay. for Card Offers, the website. Okay. So I had pitched to them, hey, I would like to have other publishers. And they're like, sure, no problem. So, um, you know, it sort of grew from there. Oh, and I see. It was the same content and same materials. I was like, hey, it's just going to be on other websites. Oh, okay. Excellent. So that was back in the day, 10, 15 years ago. A lot has changed online, specifically with Google, with social media. What are you doing right now? What are you doing on a month-to-month -month basis here in 2012 to market flex offers and card offers? Um, well, uh, well, card offers I really am not involved in as much anymore. Flex offers is it's kind of on its own. It's uh, yeah, and social media is really taking things in a different way. Some advertisers like to be in there, some don't. Google doesn't like the same type of content on all the sites out there, so we made adjustments, but. Um, at the end of the day, uh, it's really just raw information is provided, XML, web services, text links, or banners, 
and the custom content, the actual content, I wouldn't say custom, I'd say just the, the general content we offered, um, is not as favorable or popular now. People just like the, the actual link, and so they can just do their own custom work for, you know, to help with indexing in Google. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's, gonna, it's becoming more challenging. You have your competitors out there. Um, there's thousands of affiliate networks out there, right. and uh, it's a very interesting market. Yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, I'm personally involved with some affiliate networks. Uh, you know, you've got the, the big ones, the ClickBanks, the PeerFlies, the Max Bounties. How do you differentiate your network? I mean, is it, does it sell itself or is there a specific strategy that says, hey, this is what makes us unique and why you should join us? Well, customer service is very important. Uh, people like to be able to call a network and have an affiliate assigned to their account. Um, fast payments always helps if you could offer net 30, net 15, or better yet, net 7. Mm -hmm. That helps if you go to like LinkShare, CJ, you're going to get paid when the advertising pays you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, we offer programs that are found on LinkShare, CJ, and we work with some other advertisers directly, so we're looking to just grow more as a, you know, a one-stop shop. Okay, okay. As a percentage, how much, would, how much time would you say you spend on marketing? Before you answer, I'm asking this question because... Most small business owners, people who are just getting started, they spend all of their time in their business. They want to be the best chef, they want to be the best plumber, and they don't spend enough time going out drumming up new business. So, how much time do you spend growing the business, building the business? Well, yeah, that's important. You have the best product and service, but no one knows about it. Uh, it's kind of pointless. But um, I personally don't spend much time, to be honest with you. I am more on the uh, Deal with the financial aspects of it, making sure the balance sheet's correct and mm -hmm. the accounting, and also I deal with the creative side of it, developing projects. But um, yeah, I've, I've hired people, and I would recommend any small business person they can afford it, hire someone part time or full time to do the marketing, to go out there and spread the word. Hire a PR person, do what it takes; it's worth it. And what if what if they don't have the budget? They're brand new, you know, money well, is hard yeah. to come by. Do they just spend <laughs> half their time? Oh, marketing? I'd say like a third of their time. A third? Okay. Okay. You know, they really have to out depending on the business and depending on what they're doing, but, you know, how many things they're doing on their own, but, um, you know, the type of business, but at the end of the day, you do need to spend some time on marketing, or kind of a PPC campaign, Google, or whatever you need to do. Agreed, agreed. Now, I need you to go into your memory bank here, and hopefully you can pull something out for us. I mean, if you look back over all, all the years, or even, maybe even this year, is there one specific campaign that you ran? Uh, that produce, you know, above, above average results. So, can you give us details on a specific campaign, the target audience, the medium that you used, uh, the duration, the people that you hired or had operating the campaign and the results? Can you walk us through maybe one of your marketing initiatives? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't remember the details of all of them. I mean, I've tried so many different things, and I will let you know that I think conventions are the best thing to do. Mm. Uh, because you have a lot of similar businesses in there, right. a lot in common, you meet other people in, this, in the trade, and you have an opportunity to meet other advertisers. So whatever business you're in, make sure that you go to the convention. Maybe there's one of them a year, maybe there's two or three that are related, related to your, your industry. You'll find it very worthwhile. Okay, so it, walking down that path a little further, you know, can someone say, hey, there's not my customers aren't going to be at the convention, my competitors will be at the convention. How do you... Answer that rebuttal. Oh, well, you, can, you, know, the, you know, the competitors are going to be wherever you go. Uh, they're going to be on the internet. They're going to be, right. you know, conventions. But in the day is, um, it's best that you go because so will your customers be there. Mm. So, um, in the day, I think uh, it's, it's a great opportunity for you to expose your brand. Okay. And meet people. And, um, you know, conventions I just found is very, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways out there. But I, I have found in my particular industry, Going to conventions, ad tech, affiliate summit, affiliate summit, they're very targeted and very worthwhile. Okay, okay. May not work for all industries. Right, right. That's interesting though. Now, let's say you, you ran, you went to a convention or you did a PPC campaign, you got some leads, they're not customers yet. In your experience, what has been the most successful way to transform a lead into a customer? What do, what do these prospects want to hear or see before they pull out their credit card? and buy something or sign up. Uh, yeah, I think the most important thing uh, for us is signing up for a program. You know, it's a free program. We would always bring the laptop to the convention so they could sign up there. Mm -hmm. You want to get them signing up as, as quickly as possible so you capture their information, their email address and name. Um, 
But uh, I'd say they're after the convention, 48 hours upon arrival. If you have a team that went out there, and when they come back, uh, make sure they do, you know, organize their business cards, make sure they take notes, because uh, they're going to come back with a stack of cards of all the people they met. They're not going to remember probably 70% of those people. They should really say, take some notes and follow up with those people when they get back. Send a friendly email. And a lot of people are going to be busy. I would say then follow up again in 30 days, 60 days, mm -hmm. and see what those people are looking for. Not all leads are going to turn to sales, but, um, you know, somewhat. So staying in touch, making sure you do your follow-ups, putting them through the sales cycle. Uh, don't just assume one touch is going to convert them. Is that right. what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, how would you, or how do you go about turning first-time customers into repeat customers? Now, I know you're in kind of a, a unique industry because you, you work with affiliates and they're motivated by money, so once they sell one thing, they want to sell more. But what do you do to encourage your customers to spend more money or to to promote more offers? Well, I found, yeah, there's a lot of, well, obviously, pay considerably well in terms of the um, commission structures compared to the other networks. Also, um, Newsletters help, very, very important. I also guess Twitter and all the social medias keep the publishers informed, keep them okay. in the loop. Uh, when special promotions go out, um, make sure they go out on time. Just at the end of the day, just let people know what's available and, and mm -hmm. let them know quickly. And um, offer great customer service, friendly, but um, at the end of the day, just offer very competitive payouts. Okay, okay. I want to touch on the email because Again, my, my audience is primarily small businesses. Uh, they think they're being intrusive if they email their, their list of customers or their prospective customers more than once a month. How often are you sending things out via email to your list? Oh, almost every other day. I mean, it depends which group. I mean, maybe one day we'll send to people who are approved for Macy's, another day uh, people who are approved for American Express. It all depends on the different groups. Okay. But uh, it's, it's quite frequent. Um, also, for example, um, certain banks have compliance issues, so they want them going out on a frequent basis. People have to update their content who are on automatic feeds. But keeping, you know, newsletters are good. Keeps people in touch with your network. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I advocate for that as well. Uh, it's just an easy way to stay in touch. And like they say, the more you can touch a client, the more that they consume or um, process your, your offer, your information, the more likely they are to, to buy. Can you talk to us a little bit about going into new markets? So you've been around for a while, you've seen it all. Uh, I'm sure that what you're doing today is not the exact same that you started with. You said you had card offers, you decided to go with, with flex offers. How do you make a decision on moving into a new market? I mean, we, when I did card offers, it was only credit cards. Uh -huh. And so Flex Offers was designed to do not just credit cards, but other industries such as uh, insurance to retail. And that was because we were, I was concerned that we were too much um, exposed, risk exposed in one industry. So I think you have to decide, um, you know, if you're going to be going out, outbound to other industries or further other markets, it has to make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I had to build a new platform for Flex Offers. It was already, there was already affiliate marketing in other industries, so it made sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it can't, you know, um, if it's, uh, if it makes sense to just at the end of the day to, to put that model into your business, you know, if you're selling flowers, well, sell flower pots, <laughs> you right. know. Right. So, um, if, if you, I think business owners just need to know, we'll know if it makes sense or not to go to other markets. Okay, and, and probably to add on to that, if you're financially able to stretch your resources, that's, that's probably a good indicator that you, you can go into a new market. Um, because I see a lot of businesses, unfortunately, switching directions when one thing doesn't work. They want to say, okay, I can't make money here. Let me try something else. So, Okay, Alex, we're getting close to the end here. I have one last question for you. And this is a big one because this is what everyone wants to hear. You're successful. You're running two or three businesses. Based on your experience, what are the two most important keys to building a successful business enterprise? What are two things that entrepreneurs really need to digest if they want to build a successful company? Well, I think know what you sell. Okay. Uh, it's very important. Um, you know, I think if you're in a technology business, know the technology. If you're in a, a mechanical business, know how to build a car, at least sort of do part maintenance. Um, know, you know, be able to do everything in your business because there's going to be parts that fail whether it's accounting, whether it's editorial, 
Um, so know what, know how to sell, and, and know your business. Know what you're selling. Have experience. Um, and the other thing is uh, be trustworthy, and uh, you know it's all about relationships. And the only good is your, is your reputation. So you know if you do grow, eventually you'll have employees, and you you want to work with them. So um, and you want them to work with you. So as you build your team and company, you know the small little things make make a very big world difference. Um, you know. Payroll on time, um, you know. Just make sure that you know you run a very trustworthy ship, and you'll find that your team will take you far. Wonderful. Well, Alex, again, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Lots of sage advice that you shared, and hopefully, we can do it again in the future. Sounds good. It's a pleasure. All right.